All right, hey guys, uh, Tracer here. We're doing a really cool thing today where I'm gonna show you guys um, how, why, and what I do when I play specific heroes. Uh, today we're starting out with Widowmaker. Um, she's a lot of fun, I play a lot of her. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, as you can see at the beginning there, we did see the Moira, so we're kind of just scouting for her. Um, didn't really find her, especially because you know that she threw the ball. And now we see the soldier up top. So the soldier up top, we missed, uh, we hit one shot, but we missed the others because I'm trash. And then we jump up for the hook shot there. So, the reason for that hook shot there is because I can see him running away. But once he leaves that area, I don't know if he dropped. Especially because I unscope and now I'm blocked by the bus. I don't know if he dropped or if he went back around the other side here for healing. Um, I can assume that he dropped, but that might not be the case. So we're gonna go for the hook shot here. We're gonna pause this real quick. And now the reason for this is because we wanna find him or anyone else, another healer, anything like that. We wanna see if we can find anyone over here and we want to see if we can find anyone over here. Normally, a lot of healers are going to play in this back line over on this side, as well as some tanks might sit over here. And then, like, as I said, the soldier was over in this area here. So we're going to hook shot up for that specific reason to see if we can make a pick if anyone is up top on either of those sides, specifically back here. We're looking for like an Anna or something. So we're going to keep rolling this out here. And then I throw the Venom Mine. So, um, I get this question asked a lot. Why do we throw the Venom Mine after we hook shot? There's a lot of good reasons for that. So, as you saw, we didn't find anything when we hook shot up top the last time. We had this entire viewing angle to go through. That is the worst arrow I've ever drawn. Um, we had this entire air, uh, angle to go through, and we didn't see anyone. So we threw the Venom Mine. Yeah, the Venom Mine's a little high. Um, that was unfortunate. Um, but it would have been blocked by the, um, whatchamacallit, the flag anyway. So I kind of just chucked it out. Kind of just like a, hey, it's there. But the reason we throw the Venom Mine out is because, and now please assume that the Venom Mine was lower where I was trying to aim for. So the reason we're throwing the Venom Mine down here on top of this ledge piece, which is behind the wall here, is because that's going to give us information. That's going to tell us if the Hammond, the Junkrat, uh, the soldier has run back up, has gone up back top here, or they're playing on the, oops, they're playing on the back left side here. They're playing up here on this side. Because the only way you'd be able to see that Venom Mine is if you're up here. Or, um, let's control shift one. Yeah, or if, um, you ran back out and back up top. So the reason we throw the Venom Mine, um, is because it gives good, just, it gives good vision and it gives us the ability to see, like, where the enemy is. And actually, that's actually in an okay spot. I think they can still shoot it, but I don't think it'll proc on anything. It might have proc'd on the Hammond. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, any information you can give yourself or your team is good information. And that is exactly why that Venom Mine is up there. That is the entire point. Um, is so if anyone comes up top here, we're going to know about it. They're either going to destroy the Venom Mine from over on this side... Um, or they're going to have to come up top to destroy it. That's the idea. So we do another little aggressive hook shot there because at this point I know that there is no enemy sniper to deal with me. Um, I'm free to kind of just deal it out. Make aggressive hook shot, see if I can spot anything and kind of work with that. Put some shots into the Orisa. Good time. Put some charge into the junk rat. And now we get juke around a little bit there. Um, from the halt. 
I wasn't prepared for the Arisa just to solo halt me, but I guess she's gonna. Rahaman's playing aggressive. He's in the back line. That's fine. We don't really have to worry about him too much. When him things healed up, we can make another aggressive uh, jump here. But the Junkrat decides that he's gonna try and uh, trade with me here. We give him a headshot, and uh, our Diva there clears him up. No which one is perfect. Now we've got walls. Now we see the soldiers aggressive. I can see that the Anne is hiding behind the shield. Messy. Don't have to worry about that. We get some things in here, and then. Uh, our tank dives into Let's their line, you, which forces sense. them to reset uh, all their shields and everything like that. Which allows me to jump up, uh, as we saw here. So D.Va goes in, they have to reset their shield placement here. So this is now uh, blocked off, but I'm not fighting from that angle. So that gives me the ability to be aggressive for this entire angle. Which is a widespread angle that you don't want to give a Widowmaker. Uh, so we get him, we take that ult away, Hammond dives in the back line, I'm getting pumped full healing. Um, and this is kind of the the deal for the rest of the game that you'll see. Um, the Anna and the uh, uh, Zenyatta uh, just keep kind of throwing heals at me. Because um, the rest of our team is not doing a whole lot of damage and they're not taking a whole lot of damage. But I'm playing absurdly aggressive. Um, that trap that was on the ground that you can see is destroyed there. Oh, my mouse cursor. I thought um, <laughs> it was the enemy Junkrat trap, so I was trying to get rid of it. And then it took four shots for me to realize it was ours. Anyway. Um, so again, I've got this really aggressive angle I can play from. We had shot the Orisa there. She's going to get healed up, though, so that doesn't really do much for us. Not to mention it wasn't a really big charge shot. We see the Ana. We're going to put some damage into her. We get the pick here. And we get out. But I'm going to be chased. But this, again, our healers are really good. They're on point. They're putting a healing back into me. We're back at full health. I'm free to pump some damage out again. And play more aggressive. We got another pick. So that's both no the healers down. We know their Anna's coming back. Get ready for a shot. No, we didn't get the tire. Junkrat did get the D-Mech. And so right there, um, I didn't try and run out farther, and there's a reason for that. So the reason for that is because I thought this wall wasn't as close as it was, which was an error on my part. So I thought I was going to be able to get the angle onto the junk rat right here, um, which didn't end up happening. But we did get the shot. I believe Zen finishes him. And uh, we're okay to push up. Steve against the Nano. Excuse me, sorry. I'm very tight. Uh, Steve against the Nano, so that's good. And then their Anna um, pumps their uh, Moira for her Nano as well. So that's. They've wasted two ults now. They've used their Nano and their Moira ult and their um, Hammond ult. And all we use is a nano to keep the diva alive. So we're in a good spot right now. We de the diva. Kind of just get her staggered. We can get the payload moving. I just kind of throw that down there because I remember that they were down in that section, but they moved. So that's fine. Now, once again, I know they have no snipers. I can play more aggressive. I missed some shots. Typical, typical uh, Widowmaker player. Solo queue. Um... But their Moira and Hammer are, are playing behind us once again. And that's really unfortunate for them because our team is coordinating this properly. Now, I didn't go into that room because our Anna doesn't have alt yet, as you can see up here. Um, so I just wait for her to spawn because I know she's dead, and then I can give her some alt charge. We make the pick there. Let's jump right down. We got another ultimate. So we know where everyone is. They've ceased their resistance, and that's fine. We see that the in the other room. I get stuck underneath that little lift there, which is unfortunate. We get the pick onto the Anna. And did we just make the it? No, we didn't. Now I'm just kind of free to just start pumping damage into the Hammond as he rolls around. And we jump up. So they have an Anna boost ready to go. And now at this point, we've pumped a lot of damage into the tank, so I have to assume that Moira is close to the board has her ultimate. Another thing I want you to note 
is I throw a Venom Mine here. That lands right on top of the shield before falling back down. I have practiced this I don't know how many times in game um, where I have specifically done this to a Reinhardt or an Orisa, where I have it perfect now. Um, I can do it pretty consistently, which is very helpful, and you'll see it a couple more times throughout this game where I pull it off um, to give you an idea. So that is going to fall backwards. It is going to connect onto the bus here, right on the back or right on the side here, or it could fall onto the ground. Either way, um, what that does is that gives me alt charge, and if say they try and run away after it's triggered, we can follow them. We know where they are. So that is the idea for that. Um, it also would have been an option to kind of hook shot up top here and throw it down below them. But then that puts my hook shot on another cooldown after it just came back up. And I might need that to escape or to, uh, excuse me, to play a little more aggressive. Um, so we didn't want to do that either. And theoretically, I could have aimed for this part of the bus um, to just throw it a little bit higher and angle it so maybe it would land on like the window or something back here. But having it drop specifically on the enemy is better than having it too high up where they're not going to be able to trigger it at that point. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of why I, why I do that. So it falls behind, but we kill the Arisa before he even triggers. I get the headshot. Zen gets um, shot on two. They burn ham and ult again. Zen just clears it out, heals us all up. That's all good. I'm free to play aggressive again. Now, Moira gets nano and she literally solo ults me. Um, no idea why. <laughs> uh, that's also a running theme where they're uh, they're Moira and Junkrat, and later on will be a Doomfist. They just sit on me in the back line. Um, there's not a whole lot we can really do about it. So here we can just kind of pull some hook shots. We know there's a shield there. That's fine. Hammond doesn't think that I saw him, so he's kind of just sitting up there. But I did, so he's gonna try and roll away. Forward. And he's gonna sit on me in the back line here, but I'm getting some healing. And Moira's playing a little aggressive. So again, we've been pumping damage into the tanks and the other supports, so I have to assume that Moira's close to alt here once again, especially with how aggressive their uh, tanks have been playing. So we make the pick on the diva here, we get her out of mech, we kill her, we pop back up, and we hear the sound cue and pop her immediately. So, we kill her, we hook shot up, and she's in her animation right now. So what's happening here is I'm going for this Anna. I'm hoping she's going to back up just enough or I can get just enough height that I can just clip over top of that shield to shoot her in the head. Um, which I have done before. Um, it's hard, but I've done it. Um, I've done it to a Mercy that was in, uh, or sorry, that was dashing full speed away. Um, was it Route 66? I'm pretty sure it was Route 66. I have that in uh, my Widow montage, actually. So go check that out. Um, but we're going for the Anna here, as you can see. And then we immediately swap to that Moira. So my target selection is, hope I can get that Anna. I don't. I hear, the anim I hear her cast the animation with her voice line, and I immediately retarget her. She can't shift out of anything. I play Moira a lot. She's probably my fourth highest uh, character that I play because I she's just a really fun support. And that buff that she got where she can't be stunned anymore is fantastic. Um, well, she can be stunned, but she can shift out of everything, including grav. Um, she can uh, shift out of shatter, all that other stuff. But she can't do anything while she's in her animation or during her entire cast. So she has to sit there until it finishes. So we swap targets, we kill her. That's her alt down. Now is our time to push. Arissa burns her alt. So they're pumping a lot of damage. I'm anti, but that's okay. Our soldier's playing really aggressive. She went to shield, she didn't get the bongo, so now their damage is gone. Pop her in the head. Soldier cleans her up. Now we can kind of just go for the Arissa. Two clean double taps on the... Uh, I'm sorry, now we're clear to go on the Anna. Two clean double taps on her, we're good to go. I didn't see the Doomfist in the top right up there. I didn't know he was there. I didn't hear the switch. 
Diva ult gets her Anna, that's fine. I now know there's a Demon Fist. I want to put some damage into him. I don't get him, unfortunately. He kind of just rolls away. That's kind of how Demon Fist be. We get another headshot on Nerissa. So now the supports once again are pumping up their ultimate, specifically Moira, as we can see in the top left there. And again, Moira's playing really aggressive. So she's, as I said, it's going to be a running theme. Uh, we have a DPS and a support in the back line, and she's just targeting me. And that's kind of how that this has gone. Um, our Zen, I believe, had the second most damage in the game. Um, it was pretty bad, honestly. I was sitting at 1100 uh, by endgame. But at this point, the enemy team has now recognized the problem. It's me. I'm hitting the shots. I'm getting all the picks. If someone on our team dies, I'm getting a kill on their support somewhere. Whether it's the Anna, whether we're demeching the Diva and I'm shooting her, whether it's the Moira, I'm getting the pick somewhere. So no matter what, I'm keeping us even. And so that's why the Moira, um, the Doomfist who was Hammond, who was just giving me free alt charge, is now swap. And Junkrat and Diva are kind of just trying to sit on me or keep me in check because they don't have another sniper. Now a really cool thing to note is because I know they don't have a sniper outside of the Anna, I can jump up top of the bus, uh, that green bus where that spider landed. I can sit up here, and I have this range to just freely shoot from. So what this means is, at this point, if the Orissa resets her shield, or if, she, um, if the shield dies and it's still on cooldown, I have all of this for free to pump damage through. I, my Infrasights is ending, but I already know where every, where I need to know where everyone is. Doomfist is up here. He's not a threat. Aris is over here. I can't shoot her. Shields up. <laughs> Gladiators. Um, shields up. And then I have the Anna to go for. I know the Junkrat's on his way back. He could be going up top, so I got to be careful of that, where he can throw damage down on my team. And I know the Moira's on her way back. So that's kind of the information I have, and I have all this to shoot with. So that's really good. Um, if they did have a sniper, generally speaking, they're going to want to sit probably around up here in that section. Or they could be a little closer and sit down here in that section. All, all things depending. So we'll keep rolling this out here. So the shield dropped. They nanoed the Orissa. I got to kill her. Two headshots. Now Doomfist is down here, and I didn't get the headshot in time because I was focusing on Doomfist, but that's okay. We suck. That's why it's only 60% and not 70%. Um, we get the shot into her there, and then the Junkrat's up front. Now I see the Doomfist, but I'm not crazy worried about him at the moment. We get the Junkrat, so I've now made three picks. We've got the Moira, we got the Junkrat, and we've got the Diva. So, another thing to note is right here, she's going to throw out her halt, and I hear the Doomfist. Now, at this point, I don't know if the Doomfist is going for me or not. I don't have that information, I just know that he's behind me. So, she, Arisa throws down her shield, and then she throws out the halt right here. And it's coming at me. So I'm going to hook shot up here. What would have been nicer is if I could get the angle up here. But then I'm vulnerable to any uh, of the respawns uh, via Junkrat. Or if Doomfist escapes and gets out kind of deal. He comes back up there. I'm going to get one tapped by any one of them at that point. So what the idea here is. Is that I hook shot here. And then I'm immediately going to turn my head downwards. Like, so I'm going to look down uh, as if I'm playing a Widow duel. I don't look straight down because there's no Widow, but that's the idea. And then I'm blocked by this little lip here that they can't shoot through to hit me in the head. So that keeps me safe. And at this point, while I hear Doomfish charging his punch, he can't hit me. So the halt's coming at me. I'm going to hook shot up. And I can see the Doomfist. We clean him up, and that's fine. So, as you saw again, right there, 
That's another one of the uh, traps that I was talking about. I throw the spider, lands on the shield, rolls over and behind, drops down and triggers. I have practiced that for so long, it's insane. The fact that I'm even consistent at it is good. Especially at my elo. Now, we're down here. And the reason we're down here is because now we've got another free range shooting gallery. So we have all of this area to work with. And then we have the doorway on the left side that we can get to. That's all free. And if we get into trouble, Sombra, I don't think she did, but there's the health pack behind me. Right, on, right behind me there. Bad arrow. Don't judge me. And then we've got the top right here. The stairwell to escape. And you'll see that in a minute as well. So this is a really good angle. And generally speaking, at this point, Widowmaker and an enemy Widowmaker is going to be on this side somewhere shooting. Like um, where I was pointing out before when I was on top of the bus there. She's going to be either trying to shoot into my team here. Or she's going to be over here somewhere. She could be up top behind us or she's going to be over here those are kind of her spots that she's going to want to sit any of those areas so i'm safe from having to force myself into a duel with the enemy Widowmaker unless i go over to this left wall um so it's kind of another safe spot in a safe location where i get free range to shoot people even if there's an enemy widow i don't have to take that fight by default So, we're going to roll this out here. I'm going to throw another spider there. It's triggered. They step on it. That's fine. Now I'm getting ult charge. And I can see where the Moira is. We cease the resistance once again. Now here Doomfist comes at me. And I'm going to use that little area. The exit there that I said I was going to need. And that's fine. So Moira comes in. She kills three of us. She's got the supercharger. She's also getting healing. Nothing we can really do about that. Uh... Just kind of a go again kind of deal but we're all kind of reset at this point which is kind of nice my ultimate is charging we're gonna just kind of move up here so i hear the doomfish somewhere on the left and that's fine and then i hear the junk right off and that so the idea here was i got halted I saw it come out, and then I heard Junkrat's ult. So immediately, everyone on my team is halted, and I'm the only one with the escape. And I don't know. My idea here is because I don't know Junkrat's here. What I do know is that if he is there, or he's on this left side in that building where we just were, or if he's coming from spawn somewhere down there, He's going to ult. If he's on either one of those sides, my best option is up here. Where if they decide to push forward, I can now rain fire down in this area where I'm standing currently and where my team is. Provide cover fire. Now, if he's up here, which thankfully he's not, I take the tire. Which is kind of best case scenario. Or if I'm lucky, I can shoot the tire... Um, with enough charge time. But basically speaking, I would take that tire so my team doesn't have to take that damage. So that's my thought process there is we trade the Widowmaker instead of two to three of our teammates, like a D-Mech Zenyatta who just got his ult up, um, which I wouldn't have that information unless I literally pressed tab at this point. So as far as I know, I don't, he doesn't have ult. Um, and yeah, so it's basically preventing um, Sombra can translocate out. Diva could fly away, but the tire's pretty fast, so it might follow her. So the people it can kill are me. It can DMEC Diva, can kill him, can kill him. Reaper can Wraith form. There are four people that that tire can kill with this halt right now, as far as I'm aware. So I'm going to hook shot up, and I reduce the chance of a four person KO. By going up here, if the junk rat is up there, and I solo take the tire, which means five people live instead of four people dying. 
So that's my thought process. But then, drunk right alt. It went off, and then their diva threw out her alt. So it was also kind of a good move that they went up there anyway. And as again we said before, Moira is playing crazy aggressive, and she's going for me. She had shifted as the drunk rat was um, shooting at me, so she was going at me no matter what. At this point, we're kind of in overtime, um, and the game the game is over. We don't really get anything. I don't actually think I get another pick on anyone. All right, kill the Doomfist. Doomfist jumps on me. Or is that all? I take that junk rat to the face. Moira once again jumps behind me because they've realized that I'm I'm the problem. I'm the target. So she kind of just sits in our back line, and there's nothing we can do about it. But yeah, so that's kind of the thought process there as to why I do things and why that happens, um, why other Widowmakers do things, and why you should probably start doing them too. Um, the and I do see this a lot and that's why I mentioned at the beginning of the video like why I throw venom mines so far ahead um, after a hook shot is because any information you can give to yourself or your team is good information um, you'll see Kefri do it you'll see Juzu do it you'll see um, Carpe do it Surefor um, Aimbots all of them fantastic Widow players they will all do the same thing they will try and take angles where that they can hook shot up and if there's no one to shoot, they'll throw the Venomine out. So that way, if it gets destroyed, so they're, they're going to try and position it in a place where if it gets destroyed, they have that information of where and how that got destroyed and why. So like, say you're throwing it near the spawn door in like Paris, how there's two ways out of that, uh, that area. There's a place you can hook shot up on first uh, point defense. Uh, you can see right into the spawn door. If they decide to come out that way, You'll know, because I believe there's a car there and a couple of trash cans that you can throw that venom mine in front of, and they'll trigger it. So if you hook shot up, you don't see anything, you throw the venom mine out, someone walks by it, you know someone's there, you now have vision, your team now has vision, and you if you're still in that area, like you haven't had to swap places or anything like that, they haven't pressured you out, um, you can now hook shot back up, try and kill them. Or maybe someone else has respawned and come out of that area. And they're following their teammate. You get another free pick. Kind of deal. So any information you can give your team with that is very good information. That being said, uh, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys like it. Um, by any means necessary, I'm not 4300 Widowmaker one trick only. Um, I only sit... Um, my main account's uh, 2400. And my Smurf account sits anywhere between 28 and 33. So I'm not exactly the highest... Um, ranking Widowmaker player in the world but I kind of thought I watch a lot of Widowmaker players um, and I incorporate a lot of what they do into uh, my gameplay and it shows like I've practiced um, hitting that uh, Venomine over the shields so many times I got three I believe in this in this one game that's insane 60% um, scope accuracy um, I average um I think it's 44% uh, scoped accuracy, um, which is where most GMs sit. So it's kind of to give you guys an idea. I'm not the best widow in the world by any means, but after watching and playing so much of her, I understand how her mechanics work, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, target selection, all that fun stuff. So hopefully this video was uh, informative for you guys. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, I try and answer everyone. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, please sub. Um, I have a Tracer one coming up that's a live replay, uh, or a live game, uh, voiceover that I do. I'm going to try and balance them out, do a couple of these if you guys like this format, or try and do, um, the while I'm playing format. The only problem with the while I'm playing format is it's harder for me to think and, um, play at the same time. But I have a Tracer video of that one coming out, um, kind of explains, like, when I should be charging my alt, when I should be taking duels, when I should be, like, who I need to be targeting based on the information I have kind of deal. Stuff like that. Um, you can follow me on Twitch. Um, I'll have that link below, xx2tailsxx, uh, with the number two. 
Um, follow me on Twitter at Chip Streams, C H I P P Streams. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.